So you've stumbled upon the General Motors Atlas family of engines and probably more specifically the Vortec 4200 and now you're asking yourself, should I use this engine in my project car? Well, before you commit to using this engine platform, make sure you avoid these common mistakes. Now the first mistake people make with this engine is underestimating the total size of the engine. It is a very long and a very tall engine. When comparing the length to both the 2JZ and RB26, it's approximately the same within an inch or two from the start of the engine to the bell housing mounting flange. Now when we talk about height, that's where it is substantially more, especially when paired with the factory intake manifold that wraps above the valve cover. So if you are going to use this, in a swap application, make sure your engine bay is big enough or be prepared to bang some firewalls or even cut the firewalls out. Now the second mistake a lot of people make with this engine is not fully grasping the lack of aftermarket support that these have. There are very few intake manufacturers, it's mainly build it yourself unless you use the factory option. There's a one or two aftermarket exhaust manifold manufacturers but they are very expensive and it's just kind of a very much do-it-yourself engine so if you're looking for a project that you make your own you build your own stuff this is a great application but if you're looking for something that you can just buy parts for and bolt them on and use them this is probably not the engine for you especially if you lack fabrication skills or equipment i would probably shy away from this engine but if you do like building stuff this is a great platform to get into Now for mistake number three, it kind of ties back to mistake number two, is the fact that there's not a lot of aftermarket support for ECUs. Now if you're not doing a very complicated build and it's more just a stock plus application, you could probably get by using the factory ECU, retuning it with HP tuners, but if you're going for high horsepower applications and you want to really push the envelope, you're very limited with ECUs that support this, that are known to support. Now that doesn't mean that various brands don't support it but it's just not known known ecus that are supported by this engine are things like the micro squirts max ecu and ecu master i believe haltech does also but that's something that should be confirmed before jumping into this if you have high horsepower aspirations now mistake number four that people overlook is the oil pan on this engine specifically because from the factory it is a front sump oil pan and for most applications that you're going to swap things into you need a rear sump oil pan there was never a factory rear sump option for these engines so with that you either have to have fabrication skills the tools to do so there are some people that are manufacturing rear sump oil pans but they're not always the most cost effective option you will usually spend more for a rear sump oil pan than you do the entire engine from a junkyard. So keep that in mind before you start costing things out. Mistake number five is specifically related to the alternator. Now where it is in factory applications is prohibitive to forward facing intake manifolds where your throttle body is essentially to the side of the engine, very similar in RB26s and 2JZs. Now they did this because from the factory the packaging was the intake wrapped up over the top of the engine, therefore they didn't care. But in a swap application where your height is at a premium, especially with this engine because it's so tall, you'll probably have to relocate the factory alternator. Now in my application I used an aftermarket alternator and built my own mount, but there are some people that are making factory alternator relocation brackets but just keep in mind that might cause interference with other things on the engine. So make sure you pay attention to how you're gonna route your intake and alternator if you choose to do the swap. Now the final mistake before we get to some of the pros of this engine is not paying attention to the transmission that you're going to use for your application. There are some people out there that are making swap applications, but there are very few options that actually bolt to this engine without some significant adapters or modifications. There are two options that actually bolt to the engine without having to use adapters is the Isen AR5 for a manual transmission and a 4L60E, specifically the options with a removable bell housing because you need to swap the bell housing from the factory trailblazer 4L60 to a pre presumably a two-wheel drive rear wheel drive application. 
Now, the Ison AR5 is a factory manual transmission used on the four and five cylinder variants of the Atlas family. You cannot use the factory clutch system from a four or five cylinder on the six cylinder because the crankshaft bolt circles are different. So you have to use an aftermarket clutch system even though the manual transmission is a factory option. For any other transmissions besides the 4L60 and the Ison AR5, you'll need either adapters or cutting things apart or doing custom applications to get a transmission to bolt up to this. There are numerous options and patterns out there for converting it to a standard like Chevy bolt, bolt pattern for like a turbo 350 or a turbo 400, but that's just something else that needs to be considered before you start going down this path. So now that we've kind of discussed some of the mistakes that can happen while swapping this, let's talk about some of the pros. Pro number one, this engine has an incredible power band. Its application from the factory was in SUVs and other things that needed a good power band from both low RPM all the way up to high RPM. Now, typically the factory cans will fall off at higher RPMs, but in that middle section, it is a torque monster. It is very good and we know through various applications that when tuned correctly, they can handle a lot of abuse and are very, very torquey. Now the second pro is that these things don't cost a lot. Now with their gaining popularity, I'm sure prices will go up, but for right now, which is February of 2025, they are very affordable and basically everywhere. Thankfully, this was a heavily mass-produced engine by General Motors, and they are everywhere because they were put in basically every Trailblazer and Envoy from the early 2000s all the way up to 2009. So they are readily available and cheap, sometimes a few hundred dollars for a known running engine. So that is a great pro for this. Now, another pro that should be considered is the fact that these are very large engines, but they don't weigh a lot. They have an all aluminum block, less the sleeves obviously, so they are relatively light, especially when compared to old engines that are iron blocked. I know specifically this six cylinder engine weighs less than the factory four cylinder engine that came with my car previously. So I gained double the displacement and shed weight at the same time. I don't know how you can lose in that application. Now, if you're curious as to why you should actually listen to what I'm saying, it's because I've done this. I've swapped a Vortec 4200 in my 1980s Corolla, and I've basically ran into every single one of these mistakes. So I'm hoping that by you watching this video, you understand that these are things that will come up and you will have to deal with them. But if you are still excited about this engine platform and you want to get into it, then by all means do it. It has a great upside. It's something unique. It's something special. And hey, it costs way less than a 2JZ or an RB26 and parts are everywhere unless you are going for the supreme top end of things. But if that's the case, I think it's only a matter of time before more aftermarket manufacturers jump on this bandwagon because it seems like the sky's the limit with these engines. Now, hopefully by watching this video, you guys will not make the same mistakes I did or at least know what mistakes or troublesome things are going to come when you jump into this application. So if you do, like, subscribe, check out my other Vortec 4200 content, and let's all make the world an inline six place because they are fantastic.